Hey everyone, it is Sunday morning and I know it's not my normal day to upload, but recently I became aware of some statements that were made by Josh McDowell at a recent conference when he was speaking to a group of counselors. Now, if you're not familiar with who Josh McDowell is, Josh McDowell is one of the leading Christian apologists. He is also a best-selling author, probably best known for his book that he wrote many years ago called The Evidence That Demands a Verdict, a phenomenal resource that you should have in your library as it relates to defending the Christian faith. And so he made some statements at this conference and many people considered these statements to be racist, so much so that it actually led to him stepping down from his ministry, which I'm gonna talk about all of that in this video. So what I wanna do in this video is I wanna take a look at the things that he said, and then I wanna look at how other people kind of reacted to that, and then how he actually reacted to their reaction, and then finally, I'm gonna take a look at his apology as well. Now, before we get into all of that, I wanna lead with three primary considerations for our discussion today. Number one, nothing that Josh McDowell has said or will ever say takes away from his scholarship or his contribution to the Christian faith. Any more than whatever you may say in the privacy of your home or publicly would take away from the contribution that you have made to your ministry or your business or your career. Now, it might taint your character in some way, but it doesn't take away from what you have contributed in your area of business. The second thing that I wanna say is that this is yet another example of how important it is for us to be careful with our words. Listen, particularly if you are in ministry or God has given you a platform in any way, it is critical that we watch every single thing that we say, that we're very, very careful, as you're gonna see as I go through this video, because people are quick to take little sound bites and take the things that you say and then slap a label on you and pass a certain type of judgment on you. And so that's the second thing that I wanna say. The third thing that I wanna say is for you watching this video, be careful about labeling this man as a racist because if you do, just know that you are going to have to use the exact same uh, set of judgments, if you will, against yourself as you are using against him. What do I mean by that? If you have ever made a generalization about another group of people outside of your own race, then if you are gonna label this man as a racist, then you must also label yourself as a racist as well, and more than likely, most of the people in this world, because at some point, if you're honest, you have probably made a generalization, whether publicly with your friends or privately about people from another race. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's jump into what he said and what actually happened. So once again, at a recent conference when he was talking to counselors, he actually uh, entitled his talk, The Five Greatest Global Epidemics. Now. Uh, out of these five global epidemics, the very first one that he mentioned is CRT or critical race theory. Now, already, I just have to react to that. If you are putting critical race theory as one of the five uh, greatest global epidemics, now, I don't know what the other four were because I haven't had a chance to listen to it all. As a matter of fact, they took the recording down from their website. But all I'm going to say is this. If you are gonna put that issue that's going on in this world, and by the way, I am not a proponent of CRT before you slap that label on me just because I'm a black man, right? That's not me. But what I am saying is if you're gonna put that in your top five uh, list of issues that are the greatest epidemics in our global, global epidemics today, then hopefully on that list, you've got some other ones as well like racism, okay? Now, as an aside, John MacArthur recently put out a video not too long ago, or actually somebody interviewed John MacArthur not too long ago on his perspective on social justice. And in this video, he says that he believes the social justice movement is the most dangerous uh, issue that evangelical Christianity has had to face recently and also in his lifetime over the last hundred years. Here's a short clip. And here we are uh, just two years later, 
and we see massive issues taking place related to social justice culturally and within evangelical circles. But in that meeting, after I opened up the meeting, talked about some initial things to get the ball rolling, you made a statement. You said that this social justice agenda is more dangerous than any other controversy that you've faced, perhaps the most dangerous in the last maybe 100 years, but definitely in your lifetime. Do you still believe that to be the no, case? There's no question about it. There's no question about it. Um, now, if you followed me for any length of time, you know that John MacArthur ranks up there as one of my top three or four or five favorite Christian preachers of all time. He's had a huge impact on my life. But if you've been following me, you also know that I cut it straight. And when somebody, regardless of who it is, says something that's off, I got to call it out. And what I'm going to say here is essentially this. If this man is in his 80s and he's lived that long and he's saying that social justice movement is the most dangerous issue that has faced evangelical Christianity in the last hundred years. Do you see how offensive that particular statement could be to people of color when you're overlooking Jim Crow, you're overlooking uh, Ku Klux Klan, you're overlooking systemic racism that was going on in our country and all these different things. And so all I'm saying is that we need to be careful about what we say because what we say could very well offend people even if our intentions are pure. Now, I'll leave that alone for another video. Let's get back to Josh McDowell. Now, he mentioned CRT as being the greatest, one of the greatest epidemics that our world is facing today. Now, once again, CRT was originally launched to track how, uh, after the Jim Crow laws were abolished, how did the systems of racism that were embedded in the fabric of our country, now that those laws have been abolished, how did, did those systems affect people of color after those laws were abolished? That's what it was designed to do. It was designed to track how systemic racism affected people of color after the Jim Crow. So regarding CRT, this is what he basically said. It says, McDowell told Christian counselor CRT, negates all the biblical teaching about racism because it focuses on systems rather than the sins of the human heart and said today's definition of social justice is not biblical. Then he goes on to say this, with CRT, they speak structurally. The Bible speaks individually. Make sure you get that. That's a big difference. Now, what it sounds like he is suggesting, and I could be wrong, it sounds like what he is saying is that because CRT is focused more on systems of evil or perceived systems of evil that are in our country, then that is unbiblical because the Bible doesn't focus on systems of evil. The Bible really focuses more on the individual sins of the heart. Now, once again, guys, this is the reason why you need to know your Bible and you need to make sure that you don't take for granted everything that a Christian leader says as true, even if it's me, but you check it out and make sure because this is just not accurate, right? When you look at the Old Testament, it is clear that God didn't deal just with the individual sins of a person's heart. God dealt with the nation of Israel as a whole. God dealt with systems of evil. God dealt with the system of the evil of idolatry, the system of evil of oppressing the poor. He dealt with a system of evil of immorality and child sacrifice and all of these different things. And so to suggest that, you know, the Bible just says, hey, we need to deal with the human, the individual sins, and we don't need to focus on anything systematically sounds like he's trying to discredit CRT because it's focusing more on what they believe as a structural systemic problem. Hey, don't worry about that because the Bible goes after individual sins. Look, we would say the same thing about the issue of abortion. Should we not try to deal with the overall evil that abortion, uh, the, the system of abortion in our country? Should we just say, no, the Bible doesn't tell us to do that. Instead, we just need to find every single person who's dealt with abortion and deal with the individual sins there. So that's the first thing that I see that he said that personally I don't agree with, but there's more, so let's keep going. Now, the next statement that he made is really the one that got him in the most trouble, and that is the one that he actually ended up apologizing for, 
And basically he said something along these lines. He says that not all Americans have equal opportunities to succeed. Now on the surface, that sounds like, okay, maybe he's trying to justify that, okay, not everybody has an equal opportunity. Okay, that sounds good. But then he says this, they don't, folks. I do not believe blacks, African Americans, and many other minorities have equal opportunity. Why? And this is where he went wrong. Most of them, now already, whenever you start off a sentence with most of them, you're already asking for trouble. Most of them grew up in families where there is not a big emphasis on education, security. You can do anything you want. You can change the world. If you work hard, you will make it. So many African Americans don't have those privileges like I was brought up with. Now, whether there may or may not be an element of truth to what he is saying as it relates to the value of education, among minorities or whatever, that's beside the point. The point is that he made a sweeping generalization and he later apologized for this, but he made a sweeping generalization about most blacks or most of them. And see, this is where we have to be careful because if we say these types of things, it lets people in, in terms of what you may actually believe about a whole particular group of people. Now, let me show you how one particular person actually reacted to what he said. There is a college professor, a guy by the name of Aaron New, and he tweeted this. He says, I'm sitting here kind of stunned. I have a friend at the AACC World Conference, and in his tirade against CRT, at Josh underscore McDowell just said this. Black people don't have access to opportunities, they say. But it's because they weren't raised to value education and hard work. So notice what he's, he's saying. He's saying black people don't have access to opportunities, so they say, right? Black people say they don't have access to these things. But really, the real reason is because they weren't raised to value education and hard work. Now, once again, you can see how that would be very, very offensive to people of color to make a sweeping generalization that black people were not raised to value education. And we weren't raised with the idea of hard work because maybe if we were raised with a sense of hard work, then we would achieve more in life. And it's the insinuation is we wouldn't be looking for a handout or we wouldn't be making excuses or whatever. And so once again, if this is exactly what he said, which I'm not sure if it was or not, but if this is exactly what he said, this is why he actually ended up later uh, apologizing and actually ended up stepping down, which I'm gonna get to in just a moment. Now, apparently once Josh McDowell became aware that uh, his statement was offending people, the conference people actually took the recordings of that down from their website for obvious reasons, but then he actually tweeted this in response. He says, there is a statement of mine from the AACC conference that has been circulating on social media. I want to assure my friends, colleagues, ministry partners, and the AACC community and conference attendees that I am taking the recent comments and questions about my talk seriously. My statement as quoted does not reflect my own beliefs and I want to begin by apologizing for my words and the implications they had. My statement started by saying, I do not believe blacks, African-Americans, and many other minorities have equal opportunity. I do believe this. Now, next thing he says here, it sounds to me like he is um, having an opportunity to express further about what he was actually trying to say. And that's why I said, be careful about slapping a label on somebody because he may have had the best intentions in what he was trying to say, but making a generalization was not the right approach. But it sounds like this is what he is trying to say. I could be wrong. He says, racism has kept equality from being achieved within our nation. So when I said that most minorities grew up in families where there is not a big emphasis on education and security, I made a generalized statement that does not reflect reality. Then he goes on, I apologize and reiterate my Christian love for all races, nationalities, and people groups. My desire is that we as Christians would deal with both racism and inequality as the sins 
that they are in order to restore the unity and equality that God desires for all. So it sounds to me like he's basically saying, yes, you know what? African-Americans and people of color may not have some of the opportunities that maybe people of other uh, ethnicities have. But the real reason behind that is because, as he said, racism has kept equality from actually being achieved within our nation. Now, finally, let's look at Josh McDowell's official apology, because I think there's something that we can all learn here and uh, we can learn to respect him because uh, three days after he tweeted the one that I just read, he actually tweeted his official apology, and I'm going to read it here. And it says, at a recent conference, I made comments about race, the black family, and minorities that were wrong and hurt many people. It breaks my heart to know what deep pain I have caused. It has become clear to me, along with crew leadership, that I need to step back from my ministry and speaking engagements to enter a season of listening and addressing the growth areas that I have become aware of through this. During this time of meeting with others and learning, I hope to personally grow and better understand how I can help contribute to the reconciliation and unity that God desires for us all. Now, while this apology was heartfelt and sincere, and I'm sure it came from a pure place, the disappointing part for me personally, and I'm, I'm talking from Alan Parr personally, is that, you know, if these are the statements that he's made publicly, my fear, and I'm, I'm, I'm bearing my heart here, my fear is that this might be the prevailing view for many people in evangelical Christianity, but people just aren't verbalizing it or they're not actually being caught saying it, but it is the mentality that many people have. If this group of people would just work harder and get their stuff together, then maybe they would actually be able to achieve more. And while there may be some truth to that, listen, there is never just one reason for why things end up the way they are. There's never just one reason why a group of people or a person ends up the way they are. You must harmonize that person's experiences, how they grew up, as well as, uh, as, well as the uh, responsibility, their personal responsibility to do better. So I'll end with this. You know, the Bible says in the book of James that all of us stumble with our tongue, every single one of us. So if you're reading those comments and you're passing judgment, and you know, like I said earlier, just know that you have stumbled with your tongue. You've said things that as soon as you said it, you're like, oh man, I wish I could take that back, right? And so I pray that we would pray for Josh McDowell. I pray that we would pray for the ministry and all those who follow him and that we would show him grace. That we would not be so quick to slap a label on him because the Bible says in James 3 that not all of us should desire to be teachers because we who teach will incur a stricter judgment. And I know that's talking about God's judgment, but I also think it could be that people who teach are gonna incur a stricter judgment from outside people who are judging and bringing into question every single thing that we say. So this is a great reminder that we need to be careful with what we say, but also not just publicly, but privately. Be careful when certain mentalities and philosophies and ideologies creep into your head about people from another race. I'll link the articles that I got all of these things from in the uh, description below, but I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, what are your thoughts about this situation? or the things that I've shared in this video. Hopefully you found it to be balanced and biblical, which is always what I try to do. And uh, look guys, uh, I know this is my normal day, but I will see you all on Tuesday. Bye for now.